Thank you for having me. So I'm uh, Ethel Tukudu uh, from the University of Botswana. Um, last year, I completed uh, my PhD at, uh, from the University of Glasgow. And my topic was on understanding conceptual transfer in students learning new programming languages. So I'm really happy to, to try to summarize uh, my thesis uh, today uh, in 10 minutes. Uh, so the motivation behind this topic was that while I was still in Botswana, uh, we did a study where we were studying the correlation from, uh, of the uh, secondary school grades uh, of students who are now uh, learning a Java programming language. So we were comparing their scores in the secondary school grades uh, and how they correlate to their scores in the uh, Java programming language. And we were surprised to find that the students who were doing computer studies at secondary school, uh, there wasn't any correlation with their scores uh, with uh, the Java course. So, uh, but later on, I found out that, oh, actually the syllabus did not uh, include coding, but still that, uh, you know, uh, started the, the excitement to say, oh, let's actually, you know, study how uh, students actually transfer uh, once they have learned a programming language, uh, perhaps in CS0 in first year, uh, and then they progress to uh, learn um a second programming language uh, in year two. Uh, so um, I started off uh, by exploring and investigating uh, using code comprehension techniques. Um, and my, 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 my theoretical basis were leaning towards uh, the natural language theories of how people understand uh, the natural languages. So my research was you know, was in four years. Um, so I I did a so my PhD is in computer science, but my specialty is in computer science education. So computer science education is about how people teach and how people learn. Uh, you know, computer science. So um, in the first the three phases of uh my thesis, I was just exploring and trying to see how semantic transfer happens when uh, students are you know reading code uh, so based on how similar you know two programming languages may be so i started off by exploring that uh cons that idea um and then um you know the it the results were promising so i designed a model of programming language transfer based on the first study in phase 1 uh and in phase 3 then i i, I validated the model uh through four studies of uh, students transitioning from um, first year to second year in uh, European uh, universities. Um, and then uh, the second part of my thesis now that I, you know, I kept on seeing repetitive results. I started to explore now how can, uh, you know, educators help students uh, to transfer knowledge uh, from one programming language to the other. So, the contributions of my thesis, uh, you know, I, I drew a model of programming language uh, transfer, as you can see there, uh, where um, the, I'm saying that, or I am claiming that uh, once uh, you are getting a student who has never learned any programming language, and you teach them a programming language, what will be happening uh, inside their brain is that they will have, you know, the conceptual knowledge of that first programming language you've taught them, uh, how it's, a, you know, how it looks like, the syntax level, and how it's, uh, it executes uh, in the machine. Uh, so they will link that idea to the conceptual level. Uh, but then once you introduce the students to the second programming language, they have this new knowledge where they will now be linking programming language that they already know to this new programming language that you are teaching them. And that means the knowledge structures start to expand as you see there are different types of branches, which I will explain. Uh, but the, the whole idea is that they will be faced with three types of 
once you 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 teach them the programming language they'll be faced with three types of constructs that they get to learn so uh when you teach them the second programming language they may see constructs let me uh, explain it as um you know break down that drawing uh, so they will see constructs that I, I termed as true Keruva constructs. So these constructs will have similar syntax to the programming language they know uh, and the new language they are learning. So in this case, I'll just keep on seeing using Python and Java so that it's easier to understand. And my thesis was about students who were transitioning from a Python pro imperative programming language uh, to a uh, and it was non OO uh, to a Java object oriented language. So an example of a true Keruva construct would be a while loop in Python and in Java. When you look at the syntax, it's really really similar. Um, the only differences are you know there are brackets there, there are columns there. Uh, maybe the variable is being declared there, but it most the most parts of the code are very similar. So I've been giving students these code snippets, uh, categorizing them according to my model and asking them to read code and give outputs. And what happens is when they do that, uh, remember the drawing I showed you, it will show that the first the knowledge that they are coming in they, they see uh, programming language one and programming language two as the same thing. So nothing happens. There isn't any uh, bad impact of semantic transfer. It's actually a positive one because that would mean when you are teaching a student the Java uh, while loop, they, you don't have to go too much into details about it if they already know it in Python. So there isn't any branching in their knowledge structures there. Um, and then when you go on, uh, you teach them another concept called the false Kerova concept where there may be similar syntax, but the semantics are different. Uh, an example there will be equality of composite types like um, arrays. Uh, you will find that in Python, the equality there is comparing those values inside, but the equality there in Java is comparing the actual addresses. So what would happen is a student uh, will learn uh, this concept. They, so we are hoping we, so as educators will be hoping that they should uh, have a branching at the conceptual, at the semantic level, but the syntax should be linking together. Uh, but what you are seeing happening is the students will still consider those two code snippets executing in a similar way, which gives us uh, the last, uh, the drawing there uh, of a perceived uh, true Kerova concept. And then the last type of concept is um, the, the, the way it's a, we call it an abstract true Kerova concept, although we know all these uh, code snippets are abstract, but this one was more like, you know, the, the example was more on uh, when students are learning objects because they are transitioning from this imperative non-object oriented language to an ob object oriented language and it throws them off, uh, you know, because the syntax is different, the ideas, the naming is different, you call them objects, you call them classes, you know. And but when we look behind, you know, when we try to look at, you know, the actual ideas around objects and Python dictionaries, uh, they are representing some types of, you know, data structures in the sense that, the, you know, it's about the data. Although in Java objects, it's more like structured data and combined with the behavior at the same time. So there are those challenging things that the students, when they see such when they learn such a change the paradigm, paradigm uh, they will see those uh, concepts. Ideally, we would want them to see it as, okay, the semantics, yeah, they are different, but not that different. But then uh, they start seeing that like they're learning something totally new, uh, where you, you now have two concept structures uh, in, their, in their brains. So this, like I said, the model was validated in, you know, five 
in four instances uh, in European universities is actually more than that, but the ones I wrote in my thesis were four. And these are the results I was getting, very similar patterns across all the studies where you see the first light blue uh, language is the Python, the one they are moving, transitioning from. And then when they uh, see a true carryover construct, the one that you know results in positive transfer, yeah, they don't, there isn't any significant difference in the way they perform when they're learning the second language. But when uh, the semantics are different, but the syntax is similar, the middle one, you see that they perform very less in uh, the second programming language. And it goes on also to the last uh, where the syntax is different, but the underlying, you know, behavior or concepts are similar. So um, I designed a, a, a pedagogical approach uh, which I won't go into details with, but I do have uh, papers if you are interested in reading. Uh, but basically, it's just to let the educators, you know, help the students to uh, understand and use these the, this differences between programming languages as, a, as an opportunity uh, to help the students uh, by comparing and correcting their misconceptions, which they are bringing from the first programming language, the, the instructors are helping them expand their knowledge and deepen their conceptual understanding. So this is just a model that I, I, I would advise instructors to do uh, when they are transitioning students. So the, in, the overall, what did I learn from the entire, you know, PhD thesis on transfer? So yes, uh, we can avoid multiple programming languages in a curricula, let alone uh, even in the working environment, uh, software developers get to use different multiple programming languages. Uh, but what we are realizing is that relative novices have fragile knowledge. So it's uh, innate, partial, and sometimes it's misplaced. So uh, usually educators just focus on let's solve a problem, solve a problem, and under overestimate that the students have a strong grasp of the first programming language and concepts. Uh, so they assume a lot of knowledge which is not there in, uh, in students. So how then do we move forward? We use this idea of multiple programming languages to deepen conceptual understanding uh, for students by finding the gaps in their knowledge, you know, and giving it as an opportunity to teach these hidden concepts that don't come straight forward, usually like scoping, aliasing. Um, also, you allow them to fail and correct. So the next steps I often get asked, you know, which is the best programming language then to start teaching students with? And uh, usually I just say, it, I, you know, I don't know, I don't think it really matters, but it, when they move to the second one, that's when you use all the ideas I said uh, earlier about depending conceptual understanding. So um, maybe the question would be, you know, who 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 would benefit from a research like this? You know, is it students who are at university level moving from CS0 to CS1? Is it, you know, the, the programmers who are practicing uh, at work um, and all that? But uh, I'm planning on doing further validations of the model and the pedagogical approach uh, I, I proposed. Uh, thank you very much. So these are the papers if you are interested in uh, understanding more of this research. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Ethel. Um, we've got time for one question. And the question that has come in is, how does this research relate to things like chat GPT and transferring its understanding between languages? <laughs> Uh, I was when you when you asked about ChatGPT and this, I was gonna think from a human perspective, it's actually an opportunity to compare the kind of you know code snippets we are writing uh, using ChatGPT because I can say you solve a problem in two different languages, and it will give me different answers for me to be able to explore and compare and contrast and expand my understanding. Uh, but in 